You know, there's a lot of stories about the dark web, the deep web, the dank web, whatever you want to call it, and they mostly involve murder, stalking, red rooms, drugs, all the scary, spoopy stuff that you can find online. But in most cases, these things are actually just like clips of art projects and uh, args and uh, things like that, horror content taken out of context, or even sometimes it's just old, non-copyrighted or copyrighted footage just grayscaled and edited to seem scary. Rumors of that kind of content just flies around all forms of social media, including TikTok, Twitter, uh, like Reddit, RedTube, Pornhub, what, whatever have you. And these things are generally twisted and pretty much if you put horror story ad wombo mode, then yes, you got these deep web stories. However, sometimes the reality of these stories is actually true, and it's not very often, but there has been some cases, and this one in particular is a very interesting, yet very mysteriously disturbing. So if you like content like this, go ahead and click subscribe real quick and that bell icon to get notified whenever I post a new video. Yeah. And check out all the links in the description for things like that, including our Patreon, because now I'm uploading Patreon-exclusive videos where they will not be anywhere besides Patreon. This that way and more, as well as Discord perks too. That's right, I am actually posting videos that are no longer on my YouTube, as well as videos that have never been on YouTube and never will be, and the only way to see them is to become a patron. So go ahead and check that out. But for now, hit subscribe, then come on back up, and we'll sit back and relax, and uh, let's get some mental scars. I love music, okay? I'm a metalhead through and through, but I do love a, a lot of kinds of music, okay? And I'm very passionate about it. And I tend to dive more into more obscure bands and indie things and uh, just things that haven't really seen the light of day or I, I don't know how to really put it. I, I like a lot of music, so I tend to look for the obscure. But an album was brought to my attention that is so disgusting and so vile and so controversial that it's actually illegal to own. And it's apparently so bad that it's actually rumored to not exist at all and just be an urban legend. And from my knowledge, it is very real. The album is called Pseudo Scorpion by Senjin, and why, it is, why is it illegal? Um, well, the album cover, which is heavily censored here, is of a sad, scared-looking child because all of the sound in the album, like in between all the songs and the last song, are snippets of, uh, of child porn, audio from child porn. Uh, very real, straight from the dark web, actually. And it's said that Senjin is actually a member of other like pedophile communities on the dark web as well, and that's how he gained access to these things. Yeah. He supposedly got the clips from people that he buys and sells to on the dark web, um, which is already disturbing enough. And its origin is a little murky, because supposedly it popped up on the music thread of 4chan and with no explanation. And now it's actually a banned uh, term on 4chan. You can't put Pseudo Scorpion or Senjin in 4chan, I guess. It'll just get the thread deleted or however that works. So, why do this in the first place? Rumored and often pushed that it is a tribute to Peter Sotos, just a more extreme version of this kind of tribute, because Peter Sotos made music and snippets of things in his music that was very controversial, as well as his other arts that were kind of similar, except Peter Sotos used interviews with victims and stuff like that and police reports of you know sex crimes and uh, child exploitation. Pseudoscorpion is the very real deal 
and I think that it's not related to Peter Soto so much as it is related to a more horrible piece of media that's out there on the dark web and possibly directly tied to Soto Scorpion itself. You see, Pseudo Scorpion is actually a concept album of sorts, a very fucking gross one, but it, it basically revolves around, at least in pieces involving the titles and what you can pick out of what music is on it, I guess. Um, it's about a young girl who was being abused and exploited progressively by a unnamed father figure until it eventually spirals downward into a vicious torture and possibly murder. It's a very disgusting piece of media and I have not listened to it myself. I've only read about it because it is apparently illegal to own and understandably why it is straight up child porn on the files. The final track entitled Scorpion is literally the audio from Daisy's Destruction. For those of you who do not know, um, it's probably best you don't, but we're about to talk about something that is possibly the worst piece of media, and it is Daisy's Destruction. Peter Scully was actually arrested for this not too long ago, and he because he ran from Australia to the Philippines to produce, uh, well, child porn. He's one of the biggest producers of that and tied to other big name, big name producers as well, and he most notably made a series of tapes called Daisy's Destruction where he tortured about three girls from like I think ages 11, 8, and Daisy being 18 months old. And the 11 year old was actually forced to dig her own grave, raped and killed on camera. And Daisy was violated in a lot of ways and she can no longer have children but survive. And these tapes would sell for $10,000 a piece, meaning Senjin paid $10,000 presumably to get that audio. So this is possibly the most weird, disgusting rabbit hole you could try to tap into, but it seems like a lot of Commonwealth, like Australia, UK people are tied into dark web rings of child exploitation. So who is Senjin? Well, um, a lot of people are jealous of his ability to conceal his identity because no one knows. Uh, presumably, he may have been arrested around 2017, 2015, uh, those kind of years because he's went dark as far as activity on the deep web. Matthew Falder, another pioneer, which is disgusting to even put it that way, of child exploitation on the deep web, primarily hurt core. People believe that he may be Sen Jin. And uh, for those of you who don't know what hurt core is, buckle up. Hurtcore is a portmanteau of hardcore hurt. It is a name given to a particularly extreme pornography and usually involving degrading violence and child sexual abuse. It is a, something about an author described as a fetish for people who get aroused by the infliction of pain or even torture, or another person is a not willing participant. And there's been plenty of sites like this, and basically it's just torture, murder, rape, child porn. It's bad. It's literally the most deplorable thing you could possibly put online. In fact, actually, other pedophile forums on the dark web don't allow it. It has to have its own dedicated circle of freaks. How bad do you have to be of a pedophile for pedophiles to reject you? Well, apparently this bad. And it is true. It happened. This is all very real. And I found is a supposed quote saying that Senjin is a very young man. And another person that he could be, who also was arrested around the time he disappeared, is another founder and actually friend of Peter Scully's with his alias Lux. Lux was arrested in 2015 and actually owned a copy of Daisy's Destruction. So, and he owned a lot of her core websites. So that's one option. He was a 22 year old man. Regardless, it's absolutely disgusting. Reading about this is disgusting. This is actually, this is a good chance. <clears throat> this also means that's a good chance that Senjin has produced more albums, and the first one to surface on the clear web is Pseudo Scorpion. He may have produced other forms of media. We don't know. This could be an advertisement for that kind of disgusting shit. However, I can't rightfully confirm any of those theories. It's just something interesting and creepy to look at and talk about. What this means is that it's a very good possibility that Senjin is out there on the black market online doing the same shit and involved in the same kind of disgusting communities, which is a very scary proposition when you look at even the concept of this album even being made. And 
It's kind of hard to find. It's easy to read about, hard to find, and rightfully so. I have come across a few links, and I'm not willing to test the legitimacy of them, and you should not either. It is 100% illegal, and I do not condone any form of activity that involves obtaining this or hearing this. There is a copy on YouTube, supposedly it has the same title tracks and like a still from a Asian porn or something. I, I don't know, it's got a woman on her knees. It clearly looks like a porn setup. It's weird. And that's not it. I don't know what it is, but that's not it. YouTube wouldn't allow it, and it's 100% illegal. You don't want to hear it. Reading about it's already creepy enough. But there's not a whole lot more on Senjin. There's not a lot a whole more on this. Anyway, don't go looking for this. I sifted through a bunch of shit posts to get all this information, so you wouldn't have to try to look for it and unfortunately see things you wouldn't want to see, which luckily I didn't have to see anything. But anywhere that's hosting that kind of material is obviously not a very good website. You know, one of good repute. But if you like what you saw today, please like and subscribe. Check out the links in the description. Definitely join our Discord so you can chat with me and, you know, put in some, for some Q&A time and things like that. As well as check out our Patreon because there's going to be videos that you're not going to be able to see unless you're a patron. I'm going to be catering to both. It's going to be pretty cool. And uh, also be sure to stay up to date on my art contest. I'm going to probably post that in the sticky down below in the comments. So if you have any suggestions of any creepy rabbit holes or any weird media you want me to look at, just let me know in the comments below. But... Thanks for watching, and uh, seriously, don't, don't look for this shit.